Well, first of all, the agenda presentation, uh, I would like to start with a vision of wireless charging. Because uh, if we speak about society, society is something that changed very fast. We have to start from a, a possible vision of our society. Then I want to move to a perspective of how wireless charging will change our city, how will be deployed to our city. Then I'll speak briefly about the socioeconomic impact and the sustainability of wireless power transfer. First of all, uh, the vision of our project. We have worked on wireless charging because we think that wireless charging could support a new shaping of our urban environment. But to do so, we have to attain a economic and social sustainability. But uh, first of all, uh, the question that uh, many people uh, raise when you speak about wireless charging is if this technology could be acceptable from the user. Because wireless charging sometimes raises some uh, safety issue and so on. Well, in Unplugged, we fixed this problem from the technical point of view from our measurement, from the design, uh, advanced design of the magnetic device, we can assure all the user that uh, the technology is safe. But it's also the perception of the user. We are speaking about society. The society is going to accept something that it's wildly charged. I know that uh, some people raise some question about Wi-Fi and so on, could be dangerous and so on. But uh, the people that raise this question usually are people like me near, well, 40 years old actually, six months, but uh, I'll be 40 years old very soon, that uh, are not uh, used to wireless uh, transfer of data, information, and so on. New generation are creating new paradigm. For new generation, it's usual to have a mobile phone, it's usual to have a, a wireless, uh, a wireless uh, communication of data, internet, SMS, and so on. They live in a connected world. It's just a master of power. You transfer the data with uh, very low power. You can charge uh, your mobile phone with uh, higher power. In the future, we'll charge, uh, you can charge uh, your car with higher power. It's a matter of power. For us, older people, it's critical. But new generation will change this paradigm. And uh, just look at this slide. It's uh, a famous Swedish uh, furniture maker. Uh, there is no brand, so I'm not uh, sponsored this brand. But actually, they are releasing a, a new product, not in five years, but in just one month and a half, that it's able to charge your mobile phone, your lamp, special lamp adapted by the same manufacturer, your electronic device in the furniture. Your furniture, your bedtime table, your desk will be able to charge your device. It's a first step, not a future step, but now that uh, people will get accustomed to charge wireless some devices, small devices at the beginning. But I think that also for larger devices like SCAR, the, society, the user will accept this new technology. And you have also to consider that probably the mobility will change dramatically in the next year. The young generation, it's uh, the result of a youth survey of last year, are more interested in moving ideas than moving people. They want uh, an iPhone, uh, uh, sorry, it's a brand. They want uh, a mobile phone with advanced feature. They want to have SMS, uh, a continuous internet connection they are less interested about uh, car or moving themselves. The same study asked to the people, you could survive without uh, two months of car, without uh, car for two months, for me it would be impossible. But young people, the survey was intended for people from 20 to 25 years old, they told, oh, yeah, I can survive, no problem, I used public transportation. They ask the same question the, to the same people, the, another question. Could you survive without your mobile phone, without internet? No, it's not possible. So there is a, a change in the mentality of the people. But uh, also the perception of the environment. The same analysis, uh, especially for some state like California, highlighted that some janitor, daddy and mommy, was a little afraid about the environmental fanatics uh, of uh, the younger son and daughter. Because uh, uh, the son started to tell, no, daddy, don't use your very big car that you like. Use the public transportation. 
don't buy a, a car with uh, 200 kilowatt of power. Buy an electric car. Something is changing faster than we expect. Well, uh, for example, a car like Google, I don't like Google car, uh, sorry for the brand again, but uh, I think that uh, in the future, new generation, we like it. Not because it's so functional, because for me it's not a great problem to drive and so on, but because it's cool. Something is changing in the desire of the people. They would like to buy this car, not a Ferrari. I prefer a Ferrari, but uh, well, obviously I'm Italian. Because it's cool. In the future, cool will be a Google car, not a, a sport car. So uh, I think that this future will be shaped very, very, uh, in the mm, very near future. And this future will arrive to be consistent with our reality in with uh, progressive steps. The people will get accustomed to this new technology. For example, the increase of power in wireless transfer uh, will be acceptable. We start from data, we arrive to lamp, uh, mobile phone, and then probably your scooter or your car. And uh, the same trend will be shown in the city. We will not arrive to a wireless city from uh, one year to the other with a very great step, but will be progressive the introduction of this new technology. We will start from a static wireless charging. Uh, We'll start to have a, a, a charging device for your car in your parking lot, for example. Then you move to parking lot that are electrified with wireless charging device in your neighborhood, at your company, uh, probably near your house on the street and so on. And then we could arrive to the dynamic charging. So all the road will be electrified and so on. For static wireless city, the perspective is not 10 years from now, but it's very near. Technology is ready. The investment in infrastructure are not so huge. We speak about devices that sometimes are already commercially available that have a price that it's below the five thousand dollar, three to four uh, thousand euros. So the price it's reduced, and there is a easy of use of this device. You see, the automatic parking system is not complicated to use such technology. So I think this technology will be ready in our uh, city very soon. They th then we'll move to the uh, stationary or static and route scenario. For this scenario, I believe from our study on business model that first step will be the public and transportation. I'll show you also some data from the some stakeholders that have been interviewed at this point. And this will be easy because the cost of infrastructure will be not so high. We speak just on about public transportation, also some data regarding the city of Firenze. Then we'll move to dynamic, road electrified that allow the, mm, the cancellation of the range anxiety of many users that they have about uh, um, EVs. Well, in Unplugged, uh, we try to understand if this technology could be ready for the market, ready for our society, and the feedback for the society. We ask uh, mainly three questions. This technology will be user acceptable, is sustainable from different point of view, is economically sound. Speaking about sustainability, we, we take into account the technical sustainability, the infrastructure sustainability, and the usability of the user. For example, about technical, uh, well, the video is working, we make the question if this technology affects the drivability of the vehicle. No problem at all. The drivability don't change with wireless charging, also dynamic charging. We consider the mass, uh, the magnetic coupling and so on. We ask the about a question about infrastructure. Infrastructure could be sustainable or not? Here, a case study from the city of Firenze. We make different hypotheses, but this is related to the mm, stationary, so starting a route charging scenario. We make the hypothesis that all the urban and suburban bus will be charged using this technology with a lot of saving regarding battery and so on. The analysis of the power needed is uh, 8 uh, megawatt of power at the peak hour. Is the same power needed for high speed train? So it's not so huge power, right? it's a huge power, but if compared to other uh, source uh, consumption um, devices, it's not so high. With this power, we evaluate if the infrastructure is ready to support uh, this new technology, and uh, it's easy. 
together with Enel and Endesa, the energy provider uh, of the city, we have arri we arrived to the conclusion that uh, more or less the infrastructure is ready to support this additional load. So there is not uh, an infrastructure limit, uh, at least for this uh, uh, just the implementation for public transportation. We inquire about the usability of the solution. Bef earlier, you have seen the parking, uh, well, effort uh, uh, to, to use the static uh, charging. It's not so complex. The natural driving attitude to park, uh, it's nearly uh, sized to the expectation of the system. So people uh, are able to park with a precision of about 20 centimeters. The system required 10 to 15. But with a computer-aided system, vision-aided system, RFID, as uh, have been presented, you have no problem at all to use the system. You make some uh, usability analysis. Both for static and dynamic. Uh, we test the dynamic using the simulator for safety reason. But for some, some reduced tests, we do the same experiment also in real life, uh, well, in parking with controlled condition, again, for safety reason. And the people are ready as precision, attitude, uh, to uh, use this new technology, static and dynamic. We asked also if uh, these technologies, technologies uh, is economically sound regarding infrastructure, business model, and new service. The answer is yes, at least for public transportation. Here there is a comparison of the cost for urban buses for the city of Firenze again. Regarding the diesel powered uh, buses, the static charged buses at the uh, terminal stop and the dynamic solution. The business model provides a break even point that range from six to 10 years, depending on the technology. So the business model is sound, is an investment that the city could be interested to do. It's not true for the private mobility, at least for the penetration that you can, uh, that you can imagine in the future year. At the, at the moment, the, uh, the business model regarding private mobility is still uh, a losing model. So you need an investment from the government, UE, and so on to support this effort. But for public, you can use it. But uh, regarding business model, uh, with this new technology, you can introduce also different business model. You can open new possibility, like the park and ride scenario, where you park, you pay for the parking, and simultaneously you get charger or, for example, the storage and trading of the energy. You use your machine parked uh, in a wireless charging parking in order to trade your energy. When the grid needs some energy, especially the peak hour, you can provide it and sell it, and you have uh, an economic advantages. And then the user acceptance. We asked if this solution could be acceptable from the user and the society. The TRL, uh, together with TFL, carried out an analysis regarding stakeholders in the UK market uh, in order to evaluate uh, if this technology could be acceptable from the society point of view. Three results. First, uh, public transportation is expected to be the first application. Second, uh, we need uh, some investment by the government. Uh, could be not be a private funded uh, uh, opportunity, but must be funded by national, international, regional government. And third of all, it's not the technology that could be applied in the expectation of the stakeholder in 20 years, but just in five. It's very near horizon. Also, the perception of the user being positive. They believe, well, uh, sorry, the analysis of the benefit of this technology has been positive. The, here, there is a, just a simple scenario. In, we make the hypothesis to uh, transform uh, to wireless charging solution the 5% of the taxes uh, that run in the city of London, and you can obtain a consistent reduction of CO2 and also a reduction of cost, uh, both operating and uh, investment cost. At the end, uh, we carried out, well, view B together with TRL, an analysis of the perception of the user. User told that uh, they think, sorry, it's not so easy to read this, that this technology could be, could be positive regarding the ease of use. So I want to use this technology because it's easy. And they, this technology will provide environmental benefit, reduction of CO2, uh, well, uh, higher quality improvement, and so on. And finally, people are going to accept this technology. 
This is just a question regarding, are you interested to use a wireless charging uh, vehicle, bus, taxis, and so on? Yes, I'm very likely interested to test this new technology. There is not uh, a barrier constraint from the market, from the user. They are interested in it. Well, so we started with two questions. And uh, to all the three questions, we have to answer yes. This technology is sustainable. This technology could be acceptable. This technology is economically sound, at least uh, in the new uh, next few years for the public transportation. And this could have to shape uh, a new urban mobility paradigm, considering that also the society is changing different uh, needs, different expectations that match perfectly with the introduction of wireless charging technology. Well, uh, thank you for the attention. Question and answer later. So, well. No, actually, one thing, because um, later it would be difficult to have everybody aside. So, prefer. Uh, you have the opportunity to, do, to ask uh, questions uh, now. And, uh, like, for each presenter, he presents, and then you can ask uh, questions. So, logistically, <coughs> it's just easy. So, there is a question? Yes. Um, so you presented a very nice picture and uh, can you I'm the voice? yes, I'm not an expert in, in the area and uh, this was a great uh, picture you presented it is, it's quite nice, but is there any uh, did you survey any potential impact on, on the materials need? So because I, I need to I guess you would need to, to have something on, on the road. So uh, if we tomorrow all the cities to adopt this, uh, this technology, what would be the, the material, the basic material? Uh, you speak about lithium. Yes, for example. Yeah, yeah, for example. So, well, um, and just to, to go on with, with this idea, do you have any idea about the reliability and maybe maintenance issues? Did you take that into account when, when doing this, this survey? It's just from an outside perspective. Maybe these questions are already solved, but... Uh, no, 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 it's not a, it's a not a question. Oh, Regarding material, uh, we, we carried out also backup uh, the analysis on backup <coughs> solution. Not uh, well. If you uh, go to for wireless charging, you have the opportunity, at least for public transportation, to reduce the size of battery. So this is an important point. Uh, this technology will support the introduction of electrical vehicle because it reduces the material needs. Uh, lithium is uh, an open question. There are different uh, school of thought about uh, lithium. Is available, is not available, is really not available because China is uh, collecting all the lithium plants and so on. But uh, uh, we believe that wireless charging is one of the only, uh, one of the possible technology that will reduce the material needs. So we'll uh, partly solve your issue. If you, well, I have not show you, but uh, considering uh, the, um, the urban buses that run in Firenze, we make uh, an analysis. Actually, the electrical bus that we have in Firenze have a battery pack of uh, 40 uh, kilowatt hour. With uh, the static charging, we can arrive to 20, so we can reduce to half the dimension. With the dynamic charging, not uh, electrifying all the path, but just uh, a fourth of the, the path, we can arrive to four kilowatt hour. So we can downsize the battery of a factor of 10. We carried out also an analysis for different uh, uh, energy storage system. If you go for a static or dynamic charging, so you make a bigger on edge of the energy for the, mm, for the buses, you can use also different strategy, for example, flywells, uh, supercapacitor, and so on. That anyway, uh, again, will solve partly the material needs. Maintenance or reliability? Oh, uh, well, reliability is hard to be predicted, but uh, at the moment, uh, there are solutions that are already running of this technology. KAIST uh, started with the bus in uh, uh, five years ago, something similar, the first prototype, and is still running, not on a prototype plant, uh, on a real environment. Uh, and Gongzhong Park, uh, there is a bus that every day run and so on. And to my best knowledge, uh, we have been to KAIST for six months, uh, it have not great problem from the vehicle infra infrastructure point of view. But it's still an open question. I don't know if you know about the Charlotte uh, uh, project. Uh, 
this, we can speak about this later, but city of Charlotte uh, started with the project to electrify using wireless charging uh, the city and they stopped uh, because the maintenance was an open issue. Who had to take care of maintenance? The producer of the infrastructure, the producer of the vehicle that retrofit this technology, who is in charge for this technology? Actually, there is not the producer that create the infrastructure and the bus at the moment. I think in next year, things will change. So, for example, KAIST produced the infrastructure, produced the coil that mu must be installed on the buses. If something got wrong, don't work, who is in charge for fixing it? Who have the knowledge to fix it? So, at the moment, is an open question. But uh, when company, great company, will start to produce both infrastructure, I cannot give you name, but we can imagine, and the buses, I think this point will be fixed anyway. But from our test, uh, you can see the technology down, uh, down there. It not have a great uh, reliability issue, no more than plug-in solution. The electronics is more or less the same. Uh, it changed just the, trans mm, the inductor plate, uh, but it's uh, under the concrete, uh, could be shielded. So I don't expect, I'm not the technical guy in this sense, but I don't expect great uh, reliability issue about the infrastructure, nor the vehicle. It's just an electrical vehicle with a different charger. But it's an open issue. We can speak about it later, maybe. Okay, my, my ask is, my question is, uh, what's your opinion about uh, wireless installation at installations at home? Uh, do you have that uh, installations have any future? I think this will be the first step. Uh, well, for me, the first step will be some installation at the home. Uh, for example, for a special machine like Tesla and so on. So wireless charging could be acceptable. So it became, uh, well, the status symbol will become a cool technology. Actually, people like uh, Tesla more than Ferrari in the US. Uh, so it will become cool. The new uh, mobile phone have a wireless charge. Uh, it's not mine, but uh, have uh, a wireless charging already uh, installed on the back of the phone. I think that uh, Adium will be the first approach to wireless charging of vehicle, but not it will not be the most important. Most important will be public transportation, because for private uh, the market will be very very reduced. Uh, to the people that could buy an innovative car like Tesla, they are already available wireless charging for different car made by different brands. So well, it's uh, already an existing technology, but will be a, a minimal market the market will exploit with public. With public, we have a, a positive business model. The municipality that decide to install wireless charging at the bus stop, first step, uh, the investment are reduced compared to other solution. It's just uh, to buy the coil, uh, to bring the power, power electronics there, will be the first real great mass scale application of wireless technology. So at the moment, uh, wireless charging at home uh, for me will be minimal will be a test, uh, will make uh, uh, the society well um, uh, adopted about the availability of the technology, reliability, will be a test bench and create a sort of uh, coolness about this technology. But will not be a, a possible business model for many long years.